What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking about D1.3 gene mutations, right? So as usual guys, teachme.org, the best website for you guys. I guarantee you go check it out, get yourself awesome notes, lots of IB style questions and to prepare you for this exam, guys. Now, because we're talking about mutations, I just had to put in these guys, our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know if you guys know them, but I used to watch this when I was younger. Now, let's just get started. There's a few things we got to talk about. Let's get started with the intro, the basics. So, what the heck is a mutation? A mutation. When we talk about mutations, we're talking about our DNA. Remember, guys, our DNA, right, is like an instruction manual. Right? When you try and build something, you read this manual and you follow the instructions um, to eventually build this product that you're trying to make, right? whether it be a plane or a table or whatever. Now, our DNA is the same thing. It is the instruction manual to making proteins. right? So the very first thing is, in our nucleus, our DNA right, will go undergo transcription to make an mRNA. And then this mRNA is gonna go into the cytoplasm where our ribosomes are gonna basically read it and make the protein that it's asking for, right? So this whole thing here is a whole video, transcription and translation. So I'm just putting here the summary of that, right? So our DNA is turned into mRNA and then protein. This protein, depending what protein it is, can have a kind of function in our body, right? Just like a tool or um, it has a purpose, okay? Now mutations, mutations, what does exactly a mutation mean? A mutation um, is any change in our genetic material here. So if this is, for example, uh, a gene, okay, we're looking at a section of the DNA. This is a gene that's coding for some sort of protein. Any change in these nucleotides is considered a mutation, okay? So when one or more nucleotides, these guys here, the A, um, A, C, T, or G, when any of those guys are modified by mistake, this is a mutation. Now, why did I put here the word point mutation? So a point mutation is a mutation that only involves one nucleotide. But we know that a mutation can, can involve one nucleotide, three nucleotides, 10 nucleotides. So when it involves one, we call it a point mutation, but it can happen through many, okay? Many, many nucleotides. It's gonna involve many nucleotides. Now, when we talk about mutations, for the IB, what you guys have to know are three kinds of broad categories of mutations. Let's start here with one, okay? Substitution mutations. So this is a pretty cool one. This is a kind of mutation where one of the bases are substituted for another. Let me show you here, a little diagram here. So for example, if we have this guy here, this green base, okay? And it is changed, so it's removed and replaced by another base, okay? That is a substitution mutation. We're gonna go into all of these in detail. So right now, it's really just an intro to give you guys the scope of what you really gotta know. So the next one, is gonna be deletion. So you can imagine, I always like to think of this like a, when I'm type, when I'm, when I'm writing like a, an essay or a sentence, you can accidentally replace, when you're trying to type a word, you can accidentally write one letter in place of another. That's like a substitution, right? A spelling mistake. A deletion, you can accidentally delete a letter of a word, right? So deletion is when you remove one of these guys from the sequence. So you're not replacing it, you're actually just removing it completely. Okay, so that would be a deletion. Um, then guess what the last one is? If we have deletions, then it means we have to have insertions. So the, this is when a base uh, or a nucleotide is added to the sequence. So it's not replacing anything. It's just it's kind of wiggle waggled right in between. It's added to the sequence, okay, to contribute to it now. Okay, so these are the three categories of our mutation, substitutions, deletions, and insertions. And you can just imagine already, we're gonna talk more about it in this video, but if we're changing our DNA sequence, then we're gonna change the mRNA that's gonna be made from it. And that means our protein is gonna be altered. It might be defective. It might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing, right? So you can imagine this is gonna change this sequence of events here. Mutations can cause changes. And these changes can be good, neutral, or bad. And we're gonna look at some examples in this video. Now also, you guys must be wondering, of course you must be, 
what the heck causes these things? It's just like, how, why would this even happen? Shouldn't this stuff not happen? There are various causes that we're gonna talk about in this video, okay? We're gonna see it later on in this video where you're talking about the causes of mutations. Here, causes of mutations. And there's a lot that you guys would need to know about, okay? So hopefully this intro of mutations makes some sense to you and um, why it matters, okay? Why it matters. So now I wanna give you guys a really, really funny analogy. I find this so cool and helps me really understand this very well. You know, in English, right? When we speak English or any other language for that matter, um, our words are different lengths, right? They're not just three letters. So let's take um, for now, just as an example, imagine English only had three letter words, okay? Why am I doing this? Why? Because we know our RNA, right? When it has codons, every three bases is a codon. So this codon, these three bases will code for one amino acid and the next three will code for the next amino acid, right? So each of these codons, these three consecutive bases, code for its consecutive amino acid, which forms a protein, right? Now, imagine English was the same. Imagine we had um, our words were only three letters long, like these codons. I want to show you what happens um, in terms of English if we had these mutations that I'm talking about. Let me show you. So this is gonna be our normal one, okay, our normal one. So let's say this sentence translated into this, um, into this meaning, okay? The dog ate the cat, okay? Very, very straightforward. Now, what if we give this sentence some mutations? Let me show you. What did we do here? The hog ate the rat. We changed D for H and we changed C for R. What do we call that kind of mutation from these ones that we just learned about? We call those substitution mutations, right? So the hog ate the rat. We changed those letters. So this is a substitution mutation. So you can see a mutation can result in the alteration of the meaning of this sentence, okay? So this is the same for proteins. If we now change um, this sequence, we may change some of these amino acids into another amino acid. This could change, just like we changed the meaning of this sentence, it could change now this protein, these individual amino acids, which could alter this protein's function in a good, neutral, or bad way, okay? As we'll see later on as we go further in this video. Now, let's look at another example. What if we say the dog ate the bad cat? Does this change the meaning? And what kind of mutation was this? We can see that this is a insertion mutation. We inserted three letters here, three bases, right? Into this whole, whole sentence. And does it change the meaning? Yes, a little bit. The sentence still makes sense, but the meaning is changed. Here we just said the dog ate the cat. So it had, didn't say which, which one was at fault, okay? Now it's saying it ate the bad cat. So now we don't feel bad for the cat anymore, right? The sentence meaning it's changed once again. And this is a insertion mutation. We're inserting um, letters, okay? Now, next. Now we're gonna get a little bit more tricky here. Look at this, what the frick happened here? It looks like I made a complete mess, but all I did was I, what kind of mutation is it? Look at it carefully and tell me what kind of mutation this is. If you paid attention, you would see all I did was added one letter. It's an insertion mutation. All I did was add one letter A in the beginning of the sentence, but remember, M, um, mRNA works in codons. The, the words are in three. Each codon has three letters, right? That's the, so if we presume in English that this thing still has to have three letters, then what did we do? If we add an A here, now the first three letter word is A-T-H. And the next one would be E-D-O, E-D-O. And the next one would be G-A-T, E-T-H. You see, by doing this, by doing this insertion mutation, we did a complete mess. We shifted the whole sentence by one letter and now it makes zero sense. None of the words make sense anymore, even though all we did was insert one letter, causing the sentence to shift by one letter, okay? This is very, very important concept that you're gonna need to understand later, which we call a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation, okay? Frame shift. Don't worry, we're gonna see this later. It's just a shift in the sentence by one letter, causing it to have a completely different meaning. So. One more I can show you here, but it's caused by a different effect. What kind of mutations went on here? Look carefully, compared to the normal one. A deletion, look, we removed the T at the beginning of the sentence, so guess what? It's a deletion, we deleted this one here. So now, again, we need to have three letter words here. Now it's gonna be H-E-D, O-G-A, 
T-E-T. -E so we again cause a frame shift, a whole shift in the sentence. Okay, and this one was caused by what? A deletion okay so both of these I always think of it as complete jibber-jabber so I always think of the boxer Alexander Usyk if you guys know who that is and understand this joke you can let me know in the comments but if you guys don't know this guy's English is terrible so it just sounds like this to me okay so I hope this analogy makes sense because it's gonna apply directly to this idea of how a protein can be affected in the exact same way Okay, so now that we've run through the introduction, let's now go into the specifics. Let's talk about base substitution mutations. We just introduced it. And then we're also going to look at an example. And you guys need, need, need to know this one. It pops up all the time on tests, especially also in the, in the previous syllabus. And it's definitely also going to pop up for this syllabus. So let's go talk about this substitution one. Okay, so base substitutions, we already saw the definition. It's when we're changing one of these bases. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.